All right. We've arrived at our final bad ending for Pop-Tart. So, this is where we're looking for him in the woods. We decided to stay behind. And we just have to keep picking wrong decisions and then something bad will happen. So, I lucked out here with this uh, coin flip because we were supposed to go left. And now we're going to go to the right. I followed my instincts and went right. Surely right must be right, right? <laughs> What's that? Something is coming towards me, fast. I freeze on the spot, recalling the gun that sits heavy in my pocket. Before I can make a move, a large shape lumbers onto the path and looms over me. Hello. <laughs> okay, so instead of the buck, it's a bear. Ah! A, a bear! It's so big! It towers over me, peering down at me with gleaming, expectant eyes. I stay where I am, fighting the urge to run. Running will only set off its chase instinct. I have to stay calm and think through my next decision carefully. Huh. Interesting. I didn't think this was going to lead to the ending already. I was going to make a I'm going to make a save quick cuz I don't know what I'm doing. Uh we're going to back away slowly. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to back away slowly when facing down a predator. I do so, keeping my hands raised in defense. But the bear keeps coming at me. Its strides are longer than mine, and with every step it comes closer and closer. N nice bear! As if in an effort to prove me wrong, its, lips, it, its lip curls, displaying a row of sharp teeth. Nope. Ah! I can no longer fight the urge to run. I sprint back the way I came. My mind screams at me that this is a mistake and the bear is going to catch me in milliseconds. There's no way I can outrun it. But I can't stop. I push my legs to move as fast as they can. Any moment I expect to feel sharp teeth sinking into my skin, but I'm too terrified to look back and see how close the bear is. I run for what seems like ages until I can't run anymore. I slow to a trot, struggling for air. My lungs burn hotter than fire. I have nothing left to give. But nothing happens. Hmm? The bear did not give chase. Thank you, God! I flop over into the grass, chest heaving, muscles throbbing. I don't know how long I lay there, trying to regain my strength. I remind myself of Melvin's plight and force myself up, but my body is slow to respond. I'm going to have to take it easy if I'm going to find him tonight. Once up, I observe my surroundings. Nothing looks familiar. I'm dreadfully lost, but at least I'm alive. Nothing I can do but pick a direction and go. Hopefully my instincts won't lead me astray this time. Alright. So we didn't have to follow Bandit. This time we're going to raise the gun. No, wait. I raised the gun last time. Boop. There we go. Run is what I need to do. I don't hesitate. I take off into the woods, too afraid to look behind me. I run faster than I ever have in my life. I run until that heavy feeling in the air vanishes, until the sounds of the forest restart, and even then I don't stop. Eventually, I collapse, crying and having no idea what just happened. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay! I take deep breaths to calm my shaking body, running my hands up and down my arms to soothe myself. Get up. Keep going. You have to find Melvin. Trembling, I force myself up and observe my surroundings. Nothing looks familiar. I'm dreadfully lost, but at least I'm alive. I continue walking through the woods, terrified that I might encounter that thing again, whatever it was. I'm beginning to feel hopeless. That glimmer of optimism I had earlier has long since died. It seems like this night is never going to end. I'm never going to find Melvin all on my own. 
In fact, it seems I only managed to scare myself silly and get myself lost. I'm too tired to go another step. Biting back tears, I sit down at the base of an oak tree, shivering. Melvin, where are you? Melvin! There is no reply. I'm sorry, Melvin. I'm sorry I couldn't find you. Cadence. It's so dark. I can't see anything. I feel so empty. So hopeless. Mr. Wiley's words echo in my mind. I'm nothing but a liability. I don't belong anywhere. You belong with me, darling. M mother Is that you? No. It can't be her. Mother never spoke to me with such tenderness in her voice. Come with me. I will take care of you. Who are you? I can't see you in the dark. Yes, it is very dark. But the light is not far off. I will show you. Just take my hand and we will go far away from here. Nothing will ever hurt you again. You're tired of the pain, aren't you? You must rest. This is my mind playing tricks on me. I know it is. Perhaps I should stop fighting it. Let the insanity consume me once and for all. But... I don't... want to leave her. She's everything to me. Aw, but don't you see? She has already left you. <gasps> Do you really think she cared about you? No one has ever cared about you. Look around you. She's not here. But I am. I would never leave you. A white hand reaches for me, materializing from the darkness. Let us go together. You'll never have to burden anyone ever again. I take the hand. It's colder than anything I've ever touched. Colder than even death. I found her! She's here! I blink awake, shielding my eyes from harsh sunlight. What happened? Did I fall asleep? Suddenly I'm surrounded by people. A search party. They help me to my feet and shuttle me along. I struggle to stay upright, groggy and disoriented. The hands holding onto my arms keep me from stumbling. Let's get you home. W wait What about- Don't worry. Leave it to us. We're going to find him. But they never found him. They searched for weeks upon weeks. They brought in search dogs and helicopters, but they never managed to locate him. And all the while, I was consumed with guilt. I could barely even eat. I kept thinking, what if I had done so and so differently? Why didn't I keep looking until I found him? I was closer than anyone. I could have found him before it was too late. If only I had pushed myself a little bit more. Eventually, marching band season passed. Even if we still had a marching band, that hole on the field never would have been filled. As the air turned colder, so did the trail. Everyone began to forget the shy, oddball boy with his offbeat sense of humor. The boy who they said didn't belong anywhere. He never really had much of a presence at the school. Never really spoke to anyone. If he did, it was hard to make out what he was saying with all that mumbling. But if shown a little patience and kindness, everyone would have found that the lonely boy had a lot to say. They would realize how funny he was. See that he wasn't afraid to be himself, despite what everyone else may think of him. Instead, he faded away. Slowly and steadily, he was forgotten. But I could never forget. Huh. So... Ghost hand can be touched? Confirmed? 
If we can believe Melvin. A very white hand. Colder than death. <laughs> Takako, is that you? Well, I was hoping we'd get like a glimpse of the ghostly ghost. <laughs> Whoever, Rebecca? Maybe? I don't know. I still don't really know what's going on. But anyway, oh, that first bad ending took me out though. These other ones weren't nearly as bad. I mean, yes, sad. We lost Pop-Tart in the woods. He got eaten by a ghost <laughs> or something. <laughs> but that I can handle over being stabbed and calling him saying that it was all his fault. I mean, it was his fault, but also the exact wording was just too much, too much pain on top of that cake. Whew. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining me for another... Bandcamp boyfriend root. I hope you enjoyed Pop Tart's bad endings. Now, back to Gilded Shadows we go, and we have a new boy that we have not even met before over there. Mr. Quill? That's all I know. His name's Quill. I think he's got blonde hair, and that's all I know about him. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to come meet Quill with me, hopefully I'll see you over there. Otherwise, I'll see you when we come back to Bandcamp boyfriend for this guy's root. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, I will see you later.